Here's a simple tip to improve the month slicers in your Power BI reports. You can use conditional formatting to show which months are on or off target, and you can even add a label to the button, or you can add a custom tooltip. Basically, this formatting is gonna make your slicer more helpful for other people when they're choosing what months to filter. They can already get some basic information without having to click and then look somewhere else on the report. So here's how you can set it up in your report yourself. The first thing we need to do is go into the settings, click this gear on the right hand side and look on the left hand menu for preview features. In the preview features, you'll find the option button slicer visual and you want to make sure that's selected. You might have to restart Power BI desktop, but you know it worked when you can see the button slicer. Add it to the canvas and just so you know, under format, you can go to align to align it in the center or the middle of the page. Now you can add the calendar month, but you want to make sure it's not sorting alphabetically. To avoid this, we want to go and select the field and then sort by the month number. Now, once we've set this option, we're going to sort properly from January to December. We can start off with some basic formatting, open the formatting pane and make sure you have turned off things like the title, the background, the visual border and the shadow. If these are already disabled, that's fine. Go to the layout and make sure that you choose one row by 12 columns, then resize the visual so you can see all of the calendar months. We now have the slicer in the approximate shape that we want it to be. We just have to format it to look the way we want. The first thing we can do is go into the callout values to format the text, select all buttons and all states, and choose a font that makes sense like Sego UI something that's easy to read and simple. Now, what I like to do is go to the selected button state and then make it bold and the hover button state and make it to go UI semi bold. This gives a nice effect that highlights when we're selecting or hovering one of the buttons. From here, we can now continue with formatting the actual button layout. We can choose the rounded rectangle and then set the rounded corners to six pixels but this is really up to your own preference. From here, we can also do things like disabling the fill and the border for all of the buttons and turning on an accent bar and increasing it to three pixels. This is totally up to your personal preference. This is just what I tend to do in this example. Again, for the selected state, I like to turn on the fill and make it more transparent just so that it's more subtle and also to be able to alter the accent bar as well so that there's gonna be no accent bar when we're selecting one of these buttons. Again, we're also going to set some effects on the hover, like having the accent bar grow a little bit just to be able to emphasize it. And on the pressed state, we want it to be the same as when we hover. Now it's time for conditional formatting. We want to set it up so that the buttons show if the month is on target or off target. Again, to already give some information to users before they actually have to make that selection. When you do this, you want to make sure that you explain to users what the conditional formatting actually means, what those colors are. Don't just assume they're going to figure out by themselves. Putting it in a legend or a title is a good way to do this, a tooltip, or just being able to make it findable in some other page of the report. I prefer to do conditional formatting in a DAX measure in the report that specifies the formatting logic and which references colors in the theme. If you want to know more about why this approach is useful, please do check out my article and video on SQL BI, but long story short, it is way easier to maintain and change in the future. If you have a whole bunch of conditional formatting that you need to do in different properties and visuals and report pages, it is way easier if you specify this in a measure and then use that measure in multiple places. That way, if you want to change the logic, you change the DAX. If you want to change the colors, then you change the theme. That keeps it pretty simple and it saves you a whole bunch of time rather than clicking through the formatting pane for all those different visuals. Let's create this DAX measure. It's going to have our actuals and targets as well as our colors declared as variables for readability. Now, this measure is pretty straightforward. If the actuals are not blank and if the actuals are above the target, 
then we want to return a color. If the actuals are above the target, we want to return the good color. Otherwise, if they're below the target, then we want to return the bad color. Now, if the actuals are blank, we want to return a neutral color. Basically, if it's good, we want blue. If it's bad, we want red. And if it's missing, then we want gray. We know this because if we go to our theme options, select customize theme, we can see the sentiment colors and the diverging colors. This is what we're referring to. Now we need to apply this formatting, but first we have to make sure that this measure is not set to general, but set to text. We can start applying it to our various properties. For instance, we can apply it to the callout values, making sure that we apply it to all states, selecting that conditional formatting button, then going in the format styles, choosing field value to format with a DAX measure or visual calculation, and then choosing the measure. Remember, the measure won't appear if it's not the right type, but we can see that it's now applied, except for the selected button. So in order to fix that, we have to go to the selected state. And we have to go back into the conditional formatting, field value, and then choose that measure again. So we're already using that measure in multiple different places. Now we can apply this formatting logic to the button styles, including for all buttons, the accent bar. Again, we go into the field value, we choose the measure that we added, and then we apply it. Now we have to make sure it's applied to the fill as well, but this is only going to be on our selected state so we want to then make sure that on this state for our button, we're doing the exact same thing. So you can already appreciate that in multiple instances, multiple different properties, we're reusing one measure to de define and reuse the formatting. And we have our slicer. Pretty good. The result is already pretty nice. Optionally, you can also add a data label to the button under callout value but this can add cognitive load and complexity, so you only want to do this if it's really going to be valuable and useful. Otherwise, it could just make it visually overwhelming to look at the slicer. It's supposed to be something simple, so let's keep it simple. A lot of people also add things like icons or dynamic visualizations to slicers. I'll talk about this in another video. I'm not really a big fan. Most of the time, it ends up just being too complicated, especially in this case, where we just have a month that's being selected. Instead, you can always consider adding a dynamic tooltip visualization. This might be useful if you have some specific supplemental information to add. For example, this one highlights the month that you hover on, which could help you situationally deliver some useful information. It's just going to depend on your scenario. But in general, it's already good if you just stick to the simple version of this. The conditional formatting already does a lot. So, if you want to know how to set up any of these other things that I talked about, please do let me know. I'll create a follow-up video. Otherwise, that's it. Now you have your improved slicer, uses some simple visual cues to help users make a selection. I hope this was useful. I hope it was helpful. I will see you in the next video.